Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, we shall discuss the action principle. I know here we mostly talk about relativity. So why this detour, you may ask, and there is a good reason. In this channel, we have covered most of the basic concepts of special relativity from scratch. But we have not yet talked about the energy-momentum relation for a relativistic particle. Because to get there, first we need to define the energy of a relativistic particle. It is of course possible to start from Sir Newton's definition of force through his second law of motion and get the relativistic energy as in work done by some force. But Newtonian mechanics is essentially the low velocity limit of the fully relativistic mechanics and therefore ideally we should not rely too much on it. For example, we shall demonstrate in a future video that the concept of potential or potential energy as a function of position of the particle which we use left, right and center in non-relativistic mechanics is totally not valid in relativity. So I would rather like to get the relativistic energy from scratch and the fastest way forward is through the action principle. In this video, we shall introduce the action principle and explain what it says. Then in the next couple of videos, we shall use the action principle to discuss the idea of a Lagrangian, the Lagrange's equation of motion, symmetries of a system, and their relation with conserved quantities like momentum and energy. This is how the energy and momentum of any given system are defined physically in the most general way, not just in mechanics but also in field theories, actually in any branch of physics across all the domains like relativistic and non-relativistic systems, classical and quantum systems, etc. Now that I have given you the roadmap to relativistic energy and momentum, let's focus on the action principle in this video. This one principle is like the one ring that ruled them all in Tolkien's Lore of the Middle Earth. If physics is the Middle Earth of the Lord of the Rings stories, then the action principle is really that one ring of Lord Sauron. But that ring was evil, the action principle is quite benevolent. It gives us both relativistic and non-relativistic mechanics of a particle or a system of particles, classical field theories which includes the whole of electrodynamics that is the theory of electricity and magnetism, and general relativity where gravitational force is supposed to be an effect of the curvature of space-time, and even the quantum theory of fields which explains the fundamental structure of matter and its interaction with light and other massless particles. Although the action principle works for so many different scenarios, the underlying idea it carries always remains the same. So let's stick to the simplest case of the mechanics of a particle. What do we mean by this mechanics of a particle? Mechanics tells us how to describe the motion of a particle under a given force by predicting the path it is going to follow through space with the passage of time. We know this from high school level physics, right? that a force acting on a particle makes it accelerate. As per Newton's second law, the force is equal to the particle's mass times acceleration. This equation is then cast as a differential equation by using the definition of acceleration which is the second order time derivative of the particle's position vector. Then we solve this differential equation to express the particle's position vector as a function of time. Position being a function of time means we can punch in the value for any future time instant, let's say t equal to t1 or t2 or t3 etc. in the function and it gives us a number which is the value of the particle's position x at t1 or x at t2 or x at t3 and so on, that is at any future instant. Thus the function x of t represents the trajectory of the particle mathematically for all times. So Newton's second law gives us this power of prediction in the sense that it identifies the trajectory the particle is going to follow under a given force. How do we know that this law is valid? Is there any proof? Not really. A law is the starting point of a theory and as such cannot be proven mathematically. But of course it can be tested simply by observing the particle's actual motion under a given force and verifying that the particle is indeed following the path predicted by Newton's theory. But where is the action principle in all this? This video is supposed to be an action principle, right? It is not there yet, at least if we take Newton's laws of motion as our starting point or first principle. However, if we want a deeper understanding of why Newtonian mechanics works the way it does, 
we should take the action principle as our starting point and from there we get something called lagrange's equation which turns out to be the same force equations we saw in newtonian mechanics but let's reserve those details for later and focus on the content of the action principle itself for any particle there is a quantity called its action the value of this action can be calculated for any possible trajectory of our choice between a given pair of initial and final location of the particle notice that i said any possible trajectory of our choice not the specific trajectory that the particle is actually going to follow we have already mentioned that a trajectory is mathematically represented by a function x of t so different functions of time will signify different trajectories and thus each trajectory will correspond to a different value for the same given action for example you can see the action taking values a1 a2 a3 and so on for the paths corresponding to x1 of t x2 of t x3 of t and so on in this sense we call the action the function of a function since like the function x of t generates a number a value of x for a given value of time t similarly the action generates a number a value for itself for a given function x of t of course this value also depends on the initial and final locations that is if these are changed so does the value of the action thus the action is simply a function in the ordinary sense of the initial and final event points let's say x initial and x final but in addition to that it is also a function of the function x of t that represents the trajectory we calculate the action for the technical word for the phrase function of a function is functional and symbolically we write the action functional with the first entry indicating the trajectory a function of time and the other two indicating the initial and final space time event points by the way the initial event point x initial is nothing but the position coordinate we get when we punch in the initial time instant t initial in the trajectory function x of t similarly x final is x of t at t equal to t final given these three things the trajectory x of t and the two terminal event points x initial and x final the action functional generates a number this number is referred to as the value of the action for the given trajectory function and for those two terminal event points now what does the action principle say it says that to travel from the given initial location x of t initial to the final location x of t final among all the possible trajectories the particle will choose to follow that particular trajectory for which the value of the action remains stationary yeah it does sound kind of complicated and abstract so let's go over this critically first thing to note is we start with the initial and final locations as a given but we do not know which particular trajectory among the numerous possible ones the particle is actually going to travel through in newtonian mechanics we find that out by solving newton's force equations otherwise known as the equations of motion turns out the action principle can also single out the correct trajectory from the various possible ones by demanding it is the path for which the action remains stationary what do i mean by the action being stationary for the path the particle chooses to travel along it means if we change this trajectory slightly that is infinitesimally from x of t to x of t plus delta x of t keeping the initial and final locations the same the value of the action remains almost the same almost the same means the difference in the value of the two actions symbolically denoted by delta a is way smaller than the order of delta x of t oh and by the way we keep the two endpoints fixed mathematically means the variation of the path delta x of t is chosen such that its value is zero when we put t equals t initial and t equals t final in it now from what the action principle says about the correct path and what it means mathematically it sounds like we have to know the correct path beforehand so that we can vary it slightly to check if the action remains stationary but if we know the correct path to begin with it means we already know the answer we seek what's the point of the action principle then the point of the action principle is we can turn this logic around and mathematically calculate the change in the action delta a 
for varying a generic or arbitrary trajectory x of t infinitesimally to x of t plus delta x of t while keeping the terminal event points fixed as we have said. Some simple mathematical manipulations, for example Taylor expanding the action for the varied path to first order in delta x of t, allow us to express the change in the action delta a by factoring out the delta x of t. Basically, this is the change in the action delta a induced by the infinitesimal variation delta x of t of the generic path x of t calculated with an accuracy of up to first order in the variation delta x of t. Again, change in the action caused by the slight variation of the path calculated to the accuracy of first order in the path variation. Once we have such an expression, we apply the action principle and demand that for x of t to be the correct path, its infinitesimal variation delta x of t should not change the value of the action significantly. So delta a calculated up to the first order in the delta x of t must be 0 for any arbitrary delta x of t. That is only possible if the factor in front of delta x of t equals 0 on its own. This is the mathematical condition for the action to be stationary. In this video, we have not gone into what the action A actually looks like, that is the explicit form of the action for a particle or let's say any other system. Once we do that, in the next video, you will see that the condition for stationary action takes the form of a second order differential equation for x of t and that differential equation is nothing but the equation of motion of the particle we get from Newton's second law as discussed earlier in this video. Thus, we sort of arrive at Newton's force equations or the equation of motion for the particle starting from its action and applying the action principle. You may think, why bother with this action principle? We already have Newton's law to work with in mechanics. But mechanics happens to be the simplest scenario where we learn to apply the action principle. There are way more advanced areas of physics, for example, electrodynamics and quantum mechanics, where applying Newton's law may not be the easiest possible thing. And there, the action principle comes in extremely handy. In the next couple of videos, you will see how a thoroughly logical development of relativistic dynamics follows naturally from the action of a relativistic particle. See you in there. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.